This Photoshop video tutorial is going to be focusing on shadows and highlights. To start, I'm going to duplicate this background and I'm going to name the layer Shadows Highlights. Then I'm going to go under Image Adjustments Shadows Highlights. By default, this little dialog box comes up and you can see what it's done. The change is absolutely huge. I can expand the dialog box and it brings up a whole bunch of options. I'm not going to go into all the details right now, but what I will do is add a little bit of saturation just to give the image some more pop. I'm going to click OK and then we're just going to stop there. It looks really good, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off that Shadows and Highlights layer and then I'm going to click on the background and I'm actually going to go to Exposure. I'm going to take the white point eyedropper and I'm going to click somewhere on the side of the building. It's not actually the whitest point however I want to give this image a little bit more pop. So I'm going to click there. Then I'm going to take the midtone, and then I'm going to go somewhere in this dark area, and I'm going to click there. Now would you look at that? It completely opened up the image. But I know what you're going to say. It completely blew away the background. Look at that skyline. It's all white. The building's all but gone. Yes, that is sarcasm in my voice. We are retouchers. This is what we do. Brush. Make an opacity of 100%. Click on the mask for that exposure. And start painting. It doesn't take much. Hell, it doesn't even need to be accurate. Flip it around. Do some touch up on it. Beautiful. Then I'm going to change that to 20% and lighten up the buildings a little bit. Then I'll darken up the water just to put some more contrast back into it. Now I want to show you what happened with that original shadows and highlights that I said looked so good. Doesn't that look flat? That has contrast. It has dynamicism. It pops. It gets your attention. You want a little bit more attention? Let's add a little saturation to it. Now let's turn on the shadows and highlights again. Hmm, very flat looking image, I think. That has a story. That does not. So now, using this methodology, you can go back in here and you could really tweak these individual areas that you want to overexpose and underexpose. Let's say, for example, we want to open up this tree area a little bit. Once again, we can go back into the exposure. We can open up that tree line a little bit, maybe see a little bit more detail. And then fill back in the areas that we don't want to over lighten. can change the opacity a little bit. There, you get the idea. I didn't even need to take the time to go in there and do any tight masking or anything crazy. All I used was a big brush with a lot of feather on it and I just kinda moved it around 
and I opened up that image and it tells an entire story. Sometimes these Photoshop filters that are just automated aren't that good. I guess it's nice that it's in there, but honestly, it's clutter in the program that teaches people bad habits. And since we're talking about bad habits, let's throw away the unused layers, make a folder, make a new folder, and put all our layers into it. We can name this Highlights. If you would like to learn more, please go to www.theartofretouching.com where you can learn more tips and tricks on how to become a better retoucher.